chimera, 1b, an imaginary monster compounded of incongruous parts. Think H.G. Wells' 1896 novel, The Island of Dr. Moreau. 2. An illusion or fabrication of the mind, especially an unrealizable dream. 3. An individual, organ, or part consisting of tissues of diverse genetic constitution. Example, a hybrid created through fusion of a sperm and an egg from different species is a chimera. First published in 1981 as Gore Saga, this is Firstborn by Maureen Duffy. Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. When thinking about chimeras in science fiction, of course I think of H.G. Wells and the island of Dr. Moreau. In here we have operations to combine animal and human. And I also think of The Fly, the 1958 movie based on the short story by George Langella from 1957, and the remake by David Cronenberg in 1986. In this story, we have a fly and a human combined by teleportation. And in more contemporary science fiction, we have examples of genetic manipulation and artificial insemination. This is the case for Firstborn. The idea that you could use cross-species artificial insemination may seem absurd or weird, maybe even disgusting. But there is precedence. In the late 1920s, Ilya Ivanov, an eminent Russian biologist at the Institute of Experimental Pathology and Therapy in the former Soviet Union, carried out experiments with doctors inseminating female primates with their own sperm. Ivanov was sent by the Soviet government and Academy of Sciences to Africa in 1926 to carry out experiments involving the artificial insemination of female chimpanzees with human sperm. Upon his return to the Soviet Union in 1927, Ivanov continued this controversial research at a primate station in Tsukumi. It is claimed these experiments, which bore no hybrid fruit, were part of a Stalinist experiment to breed a human-ape hybrid. While I don't know if Maureen Duffy knew of this Soviet research, this, in fact, is what is happening in this novel. Instead of chimpanzees, it's a gorilla, an ape. The novel is set in the UK, when Dr. Norman Forrester of the Defense Ministry's Experimental Institute effects a successful fertilization of a female gorilla with human sperm, his sperm, an infant is born, Gordon, known as Gore. Gore's parentage remains a secret. Gore's existence has not been divulged to the government data bank. Gore is a non-person. He is put into foster care with people connected to Forrester's lab. Gore is raised as a human. At a young age, he is operated on so that he is capable of speech. About half this novel is about Gore's start. We see the conceit and deceit of Dr. Norman Forrester. He believes someday he can reveal his scientific miracle, but he conceals it because he's concerned how it will be perceived. Forrester treats Gore as an animal. Decisions are made based on what he believes will be best for the experiment. Gore moves from family to family. About halfway through the novel, we leave this point of view of the experiment and enter into the point of view of Gore himself. This is where the novel really takes off. The reader begins to realize the personhood of Gore. Gore can pass as a human. As he grows up, he experiences the pains and joys of school, family, and puberty. He doesn't know that he is an experiment, a chimera, part ape, part human. As I'm sure you can guess, we're barreling to a conclusion where he will realize who and what he is. This novel occurs in either an alternate or future England. In it, we have two classes of people, the haves or have-nots. The have-nots are called nons. Gore is a non in a couple ways. He's not part of the elite class, and technically, he's not human. Duffy uses this situation to examine a couple of different things. What is personhood? Does Gore have a soul? What about the rights of animals who are being experimented on? Maureen Patricia Duffy is 90 years old. 
She has long been an activist covering issues such as gay rights and animal rights, and she campaigns especially on behalf of authors. This is the only novel I would consider science fiction from her bibliography. Although born out of activism, this novel is a good novel. I was a little wary in the first half as we had the trope of the evil scientist and a very questionable scientific experiment. Combine this with the abuse of the animal experimentation and the deception of who Gore is, it was unpleasant reading at times. But when the novel shifted to being the story of Gore and for us to see things from his point of view, it really soared. It was quite easy to identify with Gore and his experiences. In 1988, Gore's saga was made into a TV miniseries called Firstborn. The miniseries starred Charles Dance as Dr. Forrester, but this Dr. Forrester apparently has some redeeming qualities. I searched in vain to try to see this movie online. I could only find old copies of DVDs for sale, and I didn't make a purchase. So if any of you have seen the miniseries, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. As for the novel itself, I give Firstborn 8 out of 10. This is a very recent publication from SF Masterworks. It came out in July of 2024. Do you have any thoughts about Chimera and their portrayal in science fiction? Have you read Gore Saga or Firstborn? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.